Well, top of the morning to you laddies. My name is Ian Lennon Buck. Welcome back to the Nebraska Farm Series. So, as promised, we said we would do an equipment tour. Now, we also still have a lot to do today, so we'll kind of make uh, make this short. But to make a long story short, I was uh, very, I was very, very, very intelligent. And uh, the truck that I used to plow snow with, yeah, I didn't put the plow on it yet. And we got hit with snow, so go figure. But also, is that as intelligent as me, is that the plow is completely buried in the back of our uh, machine shed. So we're going to have to move one of the Parker carts in order to get to it. And with that, we're also probably going to have to move our DB120. So basically, without further ado, we're going to try and get this stuff cleared out without, uh, without driving ourselves nuts. So we'll see you guys in just a second. So even though it was inside a heated garage, I am going to let that sit for a little bit and warm up. But kind of going through the main machine shed, we have a 2008 F450 flatbed that's just kind of used to haul seed. Uh, get this, it's an errand truck, basically. Got our Outback camper for springtime, summertime when that comes around. Got a 3665 Blue Drive Kinsey planter. This is a 16-row planter. We also have a 48-row planter DB120. These two are going to be the brute force of our planting operation. The Kinsey is our headlands planter, while the DB120 knocks out the main insides of the fields. Now the Kawasaki SX Mule, just for same thing, running errands. This is a really great for that drive over deck on the bottom side. We have a Kubota track skid loader. That is really, really nice. I have some projects coming up uh, later in the springtime for that. Since we don't really have much going on right now. We have a John Deere 4940 self-propelled sprayer, along with two Brent, I was just, I'm pretty much just going to say 1,300 bushel grain carts. Uh, 14, it says 1,396, but I usually only like to do about 1,300 bushel in these things. We have an S680 from 2012, as well as a Deere N542C seed drill. I always remember this one being the 1990 SC, CSC. CSC seed drill or whatever it was is one from 19, but I can't remember. And then buried behind the two carts is our Western straight blade plow, so you can really see how intelligent I was when I packed this stuff in here. And then our bucket and stump grinder for the skid steer. So, yeah, not my smartest move, to say the least. And last but not least, one of the main workhorses, but not necessarily our huge workhorse our 8345R this both both this tractor and as you guys saw in the last episode my 9430 those both have Starfire GPS these are uh, the brute force tractors of the farm as well as the smartest tractors on the farm now coming around to the back side uh, we do have a handful of implements one some of which I might end up selling off I haven't decided yet but we'll just kind of see what we need to do uh, we have a battery charger currently on the C70 since this thing has a massive draw. I know it says Ford down there, but of course it's the Chevy C70. This is our grain truck. We're hauling back and forth some dry corn, which we have, according to the production chain, we got a lot of dry corn that we need to move, 2,700 bushel worth. Uh, but this is kind of my taxi truck that goes back and forth, so we're going to leave him on the battery charger since we're kind of trying to get him started. Uh, this is actually new addition to the farm. I picked this up. A couple weeks ago on a government auction, this is a, a old Phoenix dump truck. I'm going to use this as a gravel layer for when I have to do a project later this spring, more than likely, since the ground's already going to be frozen. We have a utility load trail tilt deck trailer that'll be used to haul the skid steer around from job to job if we need that around the farm. A 2410 five section. It's actually a field cultivator, but it's called a plow. It's not. It's a field cultivator, but it acts like a plow. So it kind of makes this 2730 ripper irrelevant, but uh, that's 2410 field cultivators. This is a 2730 ripper. And then we have our Blue Jet AT3000 fertilizer applicator, which I don't really know how much of this thing I'll actually use. I highly doubt I'm going to use it very much. I might end up selling it for uh, just a bit of chunk change cash to get some more uh land or possibly just irrigation ideas that are going to be, be better than that uh then we got a little rotary hoe here for some uh little weed work in case we need it for some tight spots that i might not be able to get some spray app sprayer into but then here is the absolute bull of the farm r9430 not the oldest tractor in on the farm but definitely not one of the newest 
Uh, it's currently hooked up to my 5 section 2630 disc. Then there's this PJ Tilt Deck that I also ended up picking up, which I, I really like this trailer. I don't know how much I'm going to have it used for since it's older. It's uh, I've since kind of replaced it with my load trail, but uh, we still use that trailer from time to time. Also have a row crop cultivator for, again, just small little applications for nitpick stuff. Got the Super 600 from Wilmar of a lime spreader. Or my, if I want to do some solid fertilizer. And once we kind of get our roads cleaned up, I'll be having to go and get a load of propane, which that is exactly what this is. This is my propane trailer. Uh, this this freight liner wasn't used at all during harvest, but I have another Tempty 42-foot uh, trailer that I have this thing attached to at all times usually. But it's either this one or the propane trailer that, that runs. Then we have a Wilson Pace Setter attached to a, our Western Star Lomax. We also have a Kenworth T600 with a jet hopper trailer so that's kind of a, a really nice looking setup on that one we're going to our quonset we have the thunder creek fuel trailer which also does hold def uh it's the only reason that it looks like it's sinking into the ground is that it is like full-on fuel we do have our cartridge pressure washer haven't done anything with that we winterize that and we have our tempty trailer like i was saying that the freight liner hooks up to an 8430 an 8100 I thought that was an 8110 but it's not it's an old 8100 as well as a 9660 STS that is our other combine if we do end up running two combines in the field at once then go down to our other small cold storage shed and we will find in here I have to readjust this sometimes uh, our Demco sprayer trailer there goes Bambi we have our Demco sprayer trailer which this uh, obviously is going to be the uh, nurse tank for our 4940. We haven't gotten this thing started yet, and I really want to actually use it. It's a Ford F. Uh, it's a Ford C600, an older, older Ford, but this is a flatbed trailer. I want to use this so I can haul seed pallets with it in the spring. But that's what this thing's for. Our uh, Meridian Titan, which is hauling our Pioneer seed boxes now. Uh, those, those are actually empty right now, so uh, we'll hopefully be able to get some new, new seed from my seed dealer here come spring. When we close that, we come back down to here. We have a John Deere it's a 6300. This has got a little bit, it's my front loader tractor, and it does also have the uh, bale spike bucket. That is like my favorite bucket now. Uh, we've got a Westfield auger going up to our bin site setup, which that's just an entire system and video on its own, which runs off of an entire system. We have a backco drive over deck here, which we're probably going to need to move. A open cab 4030, which is just basically a dedicated auger tractor. It does not do anything but this job. And if we go up here, we have a Mauer, Mauer grain hopper trailer as well as a TLX 9000 cab over. I love that thing. A Landall low boy. And on the back side of this shed, trust me, we're almost done. There's a lot of little things on this farm. We have a Komatsu PC300 excavator. Now, I have to get a different bucket on this thing that has a thumb, so uh, we'll probably have to do a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of work with that. But that's pretty much everything that is on this farm in terms of equipment-wise. Uh, the rest of it is all just bins, sheds, and a house. My pickup, as you guys know, is the 2018 F-150. I ended up selling off my 2013 Silverado just for the sake of some fun savings. But we need to get that plow out from back behind all of this stuff, and that's going to require a lot of moving. So we'll catch you guys once we get a little bit further ahead of this. Oh, yes, I almost forgot uh, the other headers, as well as this, like, I believe it's like just a 20-foot wide uh, field cultivator. Nothing special. This is just kind of a used one that I have uh, for cleanup work again, stuff that the big stuff can't get to. We have a 30-foot... Uh, bean header for our 9660. Don't mind those two are kind of like touching. It's just kind of like the trailers like to roll. I have a Honeybee 240 Airflex, a 12 row uh, 612C, and a 616C. Uh, of course, the 16 row goes on the S680, and the 12 row goes on the 9660. Also got a BNB &B TB37 anhydrous toolbar, as well as a two tank setup that goes for the anhydrous. And now that we got all of our equipment down, as equipment's uh, gone through, now we can start getting the rest of this stuff out. So we'll catch you guys once we get a lot more of this stuff moved. Because it's going to take a little bit of uh, Tetris work to get this stuff out. So we ended up having to grab the 8430, which was not happy about starting. But at least it doesn't run deaf. So it didn't throw too much of a fuss trying to get going. 
Uh, but all we have to do is move out this Brent Avalanche, or basically just scoot it forward, and then we can start uh, doing the uh, equipment shuffle to basically get things out of the way, and we can start plowing some snow. So I'm just going to kind of clear a path out of here so that way I can kind of start backing equipment back in. Uh, we'll probably get the 94 just backed up straight through here first since it'll be the easiest to maneuver. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave the plow blade on the front of that F-350 for a little bit just in case besides it wants to snow again. But we'll turn that off just to save some diesels. I really don't need to be going through any more fuel right now. Uh, we'll back the sprayer back in. And the rest of this pretty much should be out of the way. I guess without further ado, we will start clearing out all of the snow from our driveways. about all there is to it now I don't plan on getting anything uh, I don't plan on needing the TLX at all or the low boy here anytime soon so what I'm technically eh, what I'm technically going to do now is I'm gonna get the skid steer for the Kubota out I'm gonna clear out this whole little area so I can get the 4030 out of there since I do have to run to uh, town and go get the propane uh, but that basically also means I'm gonna need to clear out a road to get there since uh, the county roads are not going to be cleared, so let's uh, let's get the Kubota part done first here, and then we will get to the propane. Okay, so now that we got this cleared out, I'm going to hopefully be able to get the 4030 out of here. It's going to be kind of cold, and hopefully she'll start. Like a champ. Didn't even think twice. I just wish it actually drove as easy. See, this is why I hate this thing. I wish it drove as good as it started. There we go. Give her some oomph. We'll just kind of put this over here for right now. Glide that out of the way. 
Let that warm up for a little bit. We're going to clean up this little spot right here just so we can slide the propane trailer in there without any real inconveniences. Just dump that right there. There we go. Let's clean this up a little bit. There we go. That should be good. So let's get on the road with our Freightliner. So like I mentioned, this is our propane trailer. Now I know I already have like 10% still left in this thing, over 600 gallons, but I don't think with the amount of corn I have left, that's gonna be enough. So let's kind of give this thing the beans, be careful. And we will make our way over as uh, I don't think roads are going to be terrible, terrible, but I do know this is definitely going to be snow packed, so we're going to have to watch out. Yeah, see, it's just as I thought it was going to be. It's just going to be completely snow packed. So to save possibly, you know, wrecking into the ditch, we'll catch you guys once we actually get there and we're starting to load with propane since this is this could get possibly pretty slick. And this is why I love track the spot. Look at this main road still covered. But all of there, even in the crevices and back on the back side of these things, they are still one step ahead of the game here. So we're going to fill this up probably to about, I'd say 50% uh, for gallon wise. Now I know very much that the actual load capacity on this trailer is way too high to the amount that's going in, but uh, we'll do about 50% on the tank load and then we'll call that good. So there is our level. We should be good to go. The only thing we're going to do here is uh, we'll buy the rest of the leaders to fill the thing back up. It's $226. Not the worst, not the best, but definitely not the one with the hairy chest. So we will make our way back with 3,300 gallons worth of propane. And we will see you all in just a minute. Now, luckily for me, I can actually still see my tire tracks from when I was going here the first time. So... It's not too, too bad getting back. It is really, really, really slick. Now, I don't even want to know what it would be like to have a full tank of propane on the back side of this, but I haven't been slipping terribly, but I'm not going to be pressing my luck. So we'll see you guys back at the farm. So we made it back and we got about, out of the 3,000, we had 2,000 go in. So this trailer still has about 1,000 gallons left of propane. Uh, that dryer is now still going to be running, but now what I need to do is I need to get this stuff started to get transferred over. We'll fire up our PTO trailer and get in our auger and uh, we're going to start unloading the dry corn. We'll also have to grab our backhoe auger from the opposite side of that snow bank so I might have to dig it out with the Kubota but we're basically going to stick our other backhoe auger right here underneath that pipe and start unloading it into the C70 up on top of the hill. Alright come on. Terminals seem tight see if you'll give or if you're gonna be a pain in the neck let's give her a few pumps of the gas here we go there we go yeah, she did not like that that is a certain we'll shut that I will kind of let it warm up here for just a second let's get this thing out of here so we can start transferring some grain now how this works is I will go underneath this auger, which is directly connected to the main system bin. I then will fill up this truck with the dry corn, which is coming from the corn dryer. And then I can dump this into that bin over there, which these three bins are equivalent to 3.3 million liters of corn. I only have, I think like 192,000 from my two fields that I harvested this year. So definitely not going to be, you know, filling the bins, but it definitely is going to help because if I can have dried corn to go and sell, I'm going to make a lot more money and be able to do a lot more uh, things come spring. So then we back up to the west field here and we start dumping in the bin. It's as simple as that. And as we can see, as the corn is drying, that is taking away our... Uh, propane so we're getting dried corn out of there as of every 500 corn 24 propane we get 500 dried corn 
This then completely empties out. We mosey our way back over here to the auger system. And I believe this ended up emptying completely. So once again, to keep the system going, actually, no, it's still filling. So cool. We just kind of have to keep watching that because the gravity wagon dumps slightly faster than the auger fills. But as you can see, by the time we get over here, it completely fills back up to where we were. But we have like 100,000 or like 80,000 liters worth of corn that I have to move from this bin site to that bin over there because I don't have an actual connection system like my uncle's farm has. But once we get this dried corn in the bins, I believe I'm going to hold because give or take the prices of dried corn right here. It's dumb, yes, that is $20 corn, but basically I'm going to be getting a lot more for that corn than if I were to sell the regular corn right here, which is $13 a bushel. And the high I can get for regular corn is 17 versus for the dried corn, 27 So $10 more a bushel if I sit and wait for on it for a little bit which is exactly what we are going to do. Maybe not that long, but we're definitely going to wait a little bit just for the fact that I want to actually have a little bit more chunk change to work with when it comes to land, uh, new irrigation, really any sort of idea, which, which next video for this series is going to be absolutely... I'm, I'm so excited for the next couple videos on this series. We'll just keep on emptying. So we are completely empty and we'll mosey our way once again back over to here. And that's what I mean and that's what I mean right there, as you guys can see. That means that either this bin is completely empty or this aha. That wagon's full, so what I have to do is I have to go to the PTO, turn that back on, and then turn this pipe back on once that's done filling, because I just gotta keep emptying out the the corn. And we'll mosey our way back over to here, and let's just see how much we still got to go. 48,000. We're making progress. And by the looks of that, that should be all the dry corn we have for right now. Uh, currently, I'm actually just going to leave this backhoe over here since we don't necessarily have a need to move it. Since that's all we're going to be doing is unloading corn from that. So this load, out of, out of curiosity, what I actually want to do is I want to take this into town and see how much I can get for just even 350 bushels worth of it so we're going to take this truckload into town we'll see you guys in just a second now conveniently my sell point for dry corn is actually right next to uh right next to the tractor supply so we're just going to kind of sell right here it's actually like a grocery store that takes this stuff but let's just see how much this actually gets us seventy one hundred dollars yeah, that's for 300 bushel and I can carry a thousand. So we're looking at about almost probably $20,000 per trailer I can carry in. That's not bad. So I guess what we'll do from here on out is uh, I'm going to get home. I'm going to make sure. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to get home before things kind of get nasty that's gonna do it for this one guys be sure to smash that like button subscribe down below i didn't actually know that it was going to be snowing this much in this save so definitely going to be planning for some more spring projects here going to pay off some of that loan i'll wait for the corn to get to unrealistically 27 dollars for the dry corn per bushel and uh basically we're going to hopefully be able to strike it rich and be able to do a couple new projects in the spring so be sure to check out the boomstick club for all the up-to-date content from me and the gang you already know who is in it and i shall see you all in the next one this is the rental man out